As visitors come here, it's like they're walking back in time to the 1930s. And part of our mission here at the park is to share that legacy of Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, her farmstead, her writings, and we do that every day. This organization started in the 1990s when the state of Florida instituted citizen support organizations for state parks. The citizen support organization, and ours is the Friends of the Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings Farm, supports the park in terms of monetary support, in terms of buying equipment, buying supplies, and also we do a lot of work for the support as volunteers, primarily in the public outreach. Marjorie Canan Rawlings moved here to Cross Creek in 1928 and bought this farm and grove using her inheritance from her mother's estate. When she came here, she was with her first husband, Charles Rawlings, who also was interested in having a place out in the country where they both could write. Their idea was they had this grove and that they were going to be growing citrus, making money that would give them the leisure time to work on their literary careers. Rawlings immediately took a liking to this area and to the people and to Cross Creek and the culture and Rawlings immediately started writing stories and vignettes about the people that she met here. Her literary legacy was cemented in 1938 when she published The Yearling, received the Pulitzer Prize, and by then she was a nationally known figure. The mission of the Florida Park Service is to provide resource-based recreation while preserving and interpreting and restoring the natural and cultural resources. Marjorie, at her death, willed her estate to the University of Florida Foundation in 1953. Uh, she wanted it to be left sort of as an inspiration to up-and-coming writers the way it had inspired her. It was in 1970 that the University of Florida turned it over to the Florida Park Service because it really fit our mission. The majority of the the items inside the house belong to Marjorie. Looking inside the house, uh, the writing table that she wrote uh, some of her famous books on was actually built by her first husband, Charles Rawlings. He took a, uh, a parlor table, a round table top, planted it on top of a cabbage palm log, and created a really nice place for him and his brothers to play poker. Later, Marjorie used it as her writing table. As you go through the house, paintings and furnishings and all that, many of them belong to Marjorie. She's always been somebody that it's easy to admire. And I love to come and see her house because I get such a sense of the peace and tranquility as opposed to New York, the busy bustle. And you can see how such a story would develop here. So it's just always fun to come here. Places like this, we live in such a busy commercial world. It's, I think it's good, especially for children, I mean, this would be an excellent field trip, to come here and see what it was like to live quietly in nature. I think that would be advantageous. Thursday through Sunday, you can come and have a guided tour inside the house. But at any day of the week, you can come and just enjoy the ambiance, that special cultural landscape, that feeling like Marjorie felt here is home. This is even more than just the normal historic preservation. This is actually bringing you back into a venue that is accurate to how people might have lived at that time. And I think that's so educational. I will usually ask visitors what brought them out here. Many of them saw the movie that was produced in 1983. Many of them just finished a book. I think the most memorable is if we can attract a younger audience and provide them with a, a sense of this yesteryear because there's so many things that we talk about that are not here today. You know, Marjorie never had a telephone in the house, never had a, a television, didn't have electric lights until a few years after she moved here. So all these conveniences, and she writes about them in the book Cross Creek, details all that. It kind of opens up that, that thought process of the younger audience, and I think they do go away with, wow, so there are three events that we have every year. One is Marjorie Canant Rawlings' birthday in August with cake, ice cream, usually the ice cream is made here from recipes in Cross Creek Cookery. And then we also have a holiday party at the end of the year in which the whole house is completely decorated in period decorations. 
And then the other one is our annual meeting, and we always have a program that's relevant at that annual meeting. We've had plays about margarine, and we also have cooking demonstrations that we sponsor here. We have book talks that we sponsor here. Our website is marjoriekinnanrollins.org. And on that website, you'll find materials about Marjorie, including historic photographs, historic photographs of the farm. You will find videos of many of our events, and you will find information about how to become a member and how to donate. Marjorie writes about being enchanted, the smell of the orange blossoms and the sight of the fruit. I think that same sense of enchantment is felt by park visitors. You know, when they enter in through that rusty, quirky little gate and wander up the path, they go through the cultural landscape, they get that same sense. It's a great place to come out and visit.